In this lesson, we'll pick right back up from where we left off in the previous lesson. In the previous lesson, we explored the Dunder EQ method for defining equality between our custom objects. In this lesson, we'll take a look at some additional magic methods for mathematical comparisons and operations between objects. So here's a question for you. How can I declare that an object, like a student object, is considered greater than another student object, or maybe less than, or maybe greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to another student object? For all four of those mathematical comparisons, there is a convenient Dunder method available. Let's begin with a simple one, which is going to be greater than. So below here, I'm gonna define a Dunder method, once again, two underscores, and it's called GT. GT is short for greater than. It's gonna have the exact same signature as the EQ Dunder method, because I'm still gonna be comparing two student objects. So self and the other student. Now again, how I define the concept of greater than is up to me. For this simple example, let's say that if one student's grades are higher than the other student's grades, then that student can be considered greater than the other student in the context of this program. So it's gonna be a very similar logic to what I have on line number 12. I'm gonna take my current student's grades, self.grades to access the value of the grades property, and I'm gonna check whether that is greater than the other student's grades. Now in this example, it's kind of simple because we really only have one property here as well as, as three attributes. More often than not, where you're gonna see this defined is gonna be scenarios where an object may have 20 different attributes, but maybe only three have something to do with the concept of equality. So the goal here is to communicate to Python what we mean or what is relevant when we're talking about equality or any kind of mathematical comparison. Which attributes are important for determining whether an object is greater than another object? In this case, we're not even using an attribute, we're using a property. We're saying if the current student's grades are greater than the other student's grades, then the current student is considered greater than the other student. So if you wanted this greater than to be a greater than or equal to, all you'd have to do is change the T to an E. So it's going to be dunder GE, greater than or equal to. There's also a complementary Dunder LT method, which we can define, which of course is short for less than. So you can sort of define it in the other direction. And there's a lot of variety here, so I encourage you to take some time after this lesson to explore some of the methods that we don't cover. I'll do one more here in regards to mathematical comparisons. I can define a method called Dunder LE, and that is short for less than or equal to. So this should return a Boolean that will reflect whether the current student object can be considered less than or equal to another student object. So once again, we're gonna take self as well as the other student. And once again, it's gonna be a simple return. All of these comparison methods, of course, must return a Boolean, true or false. So in order for, let's say, a student to be considered less than or equal to another student, predictably, let's say, if they get either a lower grade or the same grade, um, uh, then they're gonna be considered less than or equal to. So I can do self.grades less than or equal to other students' grades. Before we get to testing this out uh, below, I also want to show you that there are convenient methods available for mathematical operations, such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. For example, there is a convenient Dunder add magic method, which we can use to define the idea of addition between two students. What happens if I were to take Bob and Mo, for example, and stick a plus sign in between them? How do we add two students together? Well, we can define a dunder add method, and that'll make our student objects play friendly with Python's plus sign. It's gonna have the exact same signature as the methods above. The only difference here is dunder add is not expected to return a Boolean, it's expected to return a number, either an integer or a float that represents the idea of addition. So for example, what I can do here is return the sum of the current student's grades plus the sum of the other student's grades. So now if I were to add any two students together, we're simply gonna get the value of their grades properties and add them together. Here's another example. I can define the idea of subtracting one student from another by doing a Dunder method called Dunder sub. Sub is short for subtraction. It's gonna take the exact same signature as add. So it's gonna take a student object as well as another student object. And again, that parameter is up to us. And how do I wanna define the idea of subtracting one student from another? Well, one good idea is simply subtracting one student's grades from another grades, right? So I can do return, let's do self.grades minus the other student's grades. 
And again, to reiterate, all of these methods that I've defined here, or more specifically, the logic within them is arbitrary. How I choose to tell Python to compare students, to deem them greater than or equal to, how I choose to add them or subtract them from each other is totally up to me. But the importance of defining these methods is now these student objects are going to play friendly with Python's built-in symbols, with Python's built-in methods, right? We don't want to define our own system for doing addition if we can simply do it with the plus sign, because that is what most Python users know. And now we have this design where by defining gender add, we're going to allow our student objects to be added together with the plus sign. So below we can take a look at how some of these methods have been implemented. I still have my three student objects from the last lesson. So first up, let's take a look at greater than. I can check, for example, if Mo is greater than Joe. And because Mo's grades are higher than Joe's grades, that should be equal to true. And we're going to get a true. We can also check if Joe is less than or equal to Bob. Remember, we compared uh, compared two objects here with the less than or equal to thing, the operator, with the method we defined on line number 17. Is Joe less than or equal to Bob? Well, his grades are lower, so that's going to be true. We also defined a dunder add method, which means we should be able to add two students together. So here is Bob plus Mo. And if we add Bob plus Mo together, we're going to get 540. That's 270 plus 270. And we can also subtract. So if we decide to subtract, for example, Mo minus Joe, that's going to subtract 270 minus whatever Joe's current total is for grades, which is going to be 135. Okay, so it's 270 minus 135 gives us 135. And that's all there is to cover in this lesson. There are a couple more convenient magic methods for things like multiplication and division, and of course the complementary ones to these two, but I kind of left them untaught here because I want you to take the time to explore them on your own. They're going to have the exact same logic as these ones in this lesson, you're just up, it's just up to you to define how two student objects, for example, can be multiplied against each other or divided by each other. It's all the exact same logic. You're just going to define those gender methods in your class body, and that's going to dictate how those objects are going to play with built-in Python operators, such as plus, minus, slash, the asterisk, uh, the len function eventually, equality, all of these different things. We are making our Python objects play friendly with the native design elements built into Python. So I hope that general picture is starting to form in your mind of how this is helpful for accomplishing that. That's all there's to cover in this lesson, so I will see you in the next one.